Hello and happy Friday, everyone. Well, it has been a very short week, as you can imagine, but a full one at Montgomery College as well. Another successful blood drive at the Germantown campus last week brought in 62 donors just before the Memorial Day weekend. So grateful to them and what we're doing on that campus in this space. Uh, the COVID vaccine clinic there continues its progress with more than 60,000 shots having now been administered. Uh, COVID infections in the county are continuing to decline, which we know is a very good thing. And it's good news for us as we start to plan the college's return to campuses. Now, I'm sure that you saw the memos that went out last week that detailed the operational changes. And I was so pleased that we've seen so much robust engagement at our first virtual return to campuses forum that was held on Wednesday. Uh, three more are scheduled. And if you weren't able to attend, don't worry, uh, you can get one later, but you also can watch recordings. So that's very important as well. Uh, those are available online. Uh, there were some great questions that were asked about transportation, uh, learning centers, the hiring freeze, medical exemptions, parking, and so many more. Uh, some of the questions also already had answers or we have created answers and they're on the frequently asked questions about return to campuses on the college's website. So please consult there so that you can get more information that's really relevant to our return back into our workspaces. Uh, those questions will be updated as conditions evolve. So check back frequently so that you can make sure that you're abreast. This is a part of us, each of us doing the information gathering and receiving is very important. And as you may know, uh, they're going to have some more scheduled forums. One's going to be on June 8th, another one June 10th, and then one on June 17th. And because there's a different type of relationship or understanding around these issues as it relates to supervisors, we're having an additional one scheduled for supervisors, which is going to be on June 15th. Now, some more good news for us is that students continue to trust the college and its careful planning and are registering for summer classes in substantial numbers. Uh, summer enrollment for the first session is over 100% of projections, while summer two is about 89%. For the summer total, that's about 96% of projections, which is definitely an accomplishment because projections are what we use in order to design the budget. So this is a very exciting thing for us. And I want to give a shout out uh, to all of the instructors who dove right back in after commencement and are zooming away and doing all the other types of technologies, blackboarding and so forth, uh, while many of us had the opportunity to take a break. I'm so grateful to them and our students who said, let me just go right in. And all of us who support what happens in the classroom, uh, making sure that those faculty can do what they need to do. It's been a long year, uh, but summer teaching allows students to continue making progress when it's convenient for them. So I thank you for your tirelessness and your dedication to making sure that we're bringing forth the mission of the college. Now, one thing that has not changed this year is our commitment to racial justice. And that's why we'll be adding another powerful component to the fall, a center for truth, racial healing, and transformation. In partnership with the American Association of Colleges and Universities, and with support from the Meyer Foundation, uh, we'll be hosting a center that promotes dialogues around structural inequality and racial healing. Uh, the center will be based in the East County where the new educational center, <clears throat> excuse me, has been approved. And we'll be sharing more about this center over the summer as five of our faculty and staff prepare to set it up. The recent 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre in Oklahoma in 1921 was a painful reminder of why such initiatives still matter so much. And only by facing our history, by honoring it, by owning it, do we as a nation begin to truly rise and begin to heal from the ashes and hopefully build a more equitable and more just community so that everyone has the ability to thrive and to feel that they have great ownership in it. I want to thank each of you for being a part of this week's blog, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care and be well. <music>